So I'm going to do a quick review on my clone Game Boy Advance I got from China, otherwise known as the Game Box Advance. And the way I thought I'd do this review is just quickly show you the box it came in and some of the extra accessories it came bundled with. And then I'll show you the device itself and go over some of its extra features and how it compares to the real thing. But I'll probably end up forgetting to mention some important piece of information about the device during this review. And if I do, I'll try and add that into the description for later. But otherwise, I'll get started on my review of the Game Box Advance. So here's a quick look at the packaging. And I got mine from Deal Extreme in 2011, just like it mentions down in the corner there. I think that was also the year it was first released. But I paid a grand total of £28.50 delivered from China. So really inexpensive little handheld clone gaming device. And you can see they've tried to make it look as similar to the original official product as possible. They've used the same font and overall design layout. They've mentioned the brighter backlit screen and a nice little touch they've added here is the original Game Box seal of quality so you don't need to worry about any product quality control issues with this. Your, your quality is guaranteed. <laughs> but yeah. On the side here you've got the blue version they had available, the black version on the front there which I got, and then the, the silver one as well. And in stark contrast to their uh, seal of quality here, made in China, they've got an LCD screen note and uh, it's basically a, a complete lie. But it says, due to characteristics of the LCD there are some dots that do not light up or that never turn off. However, please take note that this is not a defect. <laughs> Yeah, sure, that's not a lie at all, but um, yeah, there's the warning notice here as well, it doesn't really make much sense, but it says, read through the instruction manual before setter or use of your system. So that's a quick look at the, the box there, um, some kind of funny quirks about it with the, the seal of quality, it's got it on the top as well, but uh, that's just the... Uh, part of the fun of getting a clone system from China, I suppose. So bundled in the box along with the console, you got a, just a standard adapter. This is a universal kind of adapter that you can use in any region. You just need the correct pins for your wall socket. It came with a USB adapter here, so you can actually hook this up to your, your computer and transfer files between the, the Game Box Advance and your PC. You can also charge it using this as well, and finally it also came with a AV out, so you can hook it up to your TV. Now, mine has never worked, I've never been able to get mine to, to work on the TV, it'll output sound but no video, and I don't know if that's a problem with the cable or the, the system itself, but to be honest I've never really had any desire to play the Game Boy Advance on the big screen, and if I ever did I've also got one of the Game Boy Advance players for the, the GameCube so I could always use that. So I'm not too bothered that this doesn't work and I don't really know if it's the cable or the, the system but you do get this included with it anyway. So moving on to the console itself and as you can see it's more or less just a carbon copy of the original. There are a couple of notable differences but I'll get to those in just a moment but otherwise it looks pretty much identical to the real thing. So you've got your volume slider on the side here You've got your shoulder buttons and you've got your two ports at the back. Now this port is just for charging and this one is now your AV out and your USB connection. So it'll no longer work with the regular link cable where you could hook the console up to another and play two player. On the side here you've got your on off switch and you've got your LEDs as normal to tell you when the, the battery's low or it's charging. So where you'd usually expect to find your Nintendo logo, you've now got a Game Box sticker on the top of the console. And it's similar fakery going on in the back as well with the big information sticker. So now it's all about the Game Box Advance and this is model number GT1001. And it just takes a regular lithium ion rechargeable battery. So in here is exactly the same battery that you find in the original console. And you just charge it through the, the port on the back there. But otherwise it just takes the, the regular cartridges so you can play your normal GBA games in this. You just plug them in like that. So one of the main features and differences between this device and the original is the addition of a micro SD card slot in the front. So you can now pop in your own micro SD card 
containing extra games or video or music and the console will actually work as a little media player which is kind of cool. The other big difference is to do with the screen and the screen on this is a backlit LCD the same as you'd find on like an AGS 101 but the other difference here is to do with the aspect ratio and the resolution. The aspect ratio is a 4x3 format which means it's slightly boxier compared to the original console which has got a 14x9 it's more of a widescreen effect and the resolution is slightly different on this as well so it can make games look a little stretched out and blocky but I'll show you that in a comparison uh, in just a moment. So I'll give you a quick demo of the console in action and show you the menu system. So just fire it up here, it takes a few seconds to come on. There we go. So there you can see the game box start up animation and then you're straight into the menu system. And just a couple of things to note first of all, and that's to do with the boot sequence, game saves and how the console actually runs the software. So the console has a built in 2GB memory with all these games loaded on it and obviously you've got the option of playing your games from a, a regular cartridge or from a SD card with your own games installed. So when you actually turn the console on the first thing it will do is check the cartridge bay and if there's no cartridge in it will then check the SD card. If there's no SD card in then it will basically just boot straight into this menu here. So at the moment there's nothing plugged into the console at all, there's no cartridge and no SD card. And that's how I've got to this menu here, I can choose any one of the, I think there's about 150 games built into this particular device, so I can choose any of these to play uh, from that menu there. The next thing is to do with the game save, so usually a Game Boy Advance game would save the, the game directly onto the cartridge, but with this what it'll do is actually save it to the internal memory, so that can cause some problems. If you plug in a, a cartridge it'll erase any current saves you have on that cartridge and then just save the games from then on onto the uh, the console itself so obviously that means you can't take your cartridge out and then plug it into another Game Boy Advance and continue your save you'll basically lose all your progress and you won't be able to take the save away from this device and plug it into another console so that's a bit, a bit of a negative right there um, the other thing is to do with how this runs the software and the games. So, like most of these clone devices, what it's actually doing is emulating the, the console. It's not actually playing your Game Boy Advance games on dedicated hardware or anything. It's basically emulating the, the Game Boy Advance. So, what you can expect to see is in some games a bit of slowdown or some graphical glitches or things just not running quite the way they should. So. Just a couple of things to, to note and bear in mind with this particular device. So from this menu screen you can basically scroll through all the games you have preloaded and choose which one you want to play. You can play your mp3 files and you can play your video files as well. And the other cool feature of the device is it will actually emulate the Capcom arcade system so you can play your, the likes of Street Fighter and those arcade games as well so that's kind of cool. So what I'll do is I'll quickly start up a game here and show you it running. I'll just hit A and I can start the game. There we go. Let's turn it down a bit. It's a nice bright screen. And it does a reasonably good job of emulating the games. And if I want to go back to the menu system, what I have to do is basically reboot the system. So turn it on and off and then it'll bring me back to the, the menu. So just to give you a quick side-by-side -side comparison, I've got my genuine backlit AGS 101 SP here and this is the Gamebox Advance and they're both running a copy of Choo Choo Rocket. So what I'll do is I'll zoom in and show you the difference in the screens here. So just zoom in and change the colour balance. Should hope they're able to see that okay. So as you can see, the one on the left is slightly is more of a kind of widescreen 14 by 9 
aspect ratio and the game box on the right is the 4 by 3 so it's a kind of squarer, older type of format and the resolution is slightly different as well so the games tend to look a bit blockier and stretched out. I don't know if we'll be able to see that on camera as well but it definitely looks different to the original. Let's quickly show you the menu there again. So that was my review of the Gamebox Advance and I'd probably recommend picking one up. They're not too expensive. It was under £30 for this and I mean if you want to get the equivalent uh, backlit Game Boy Advance then if you can even find one it's going to cost you at least £50 or more. And I mean the only thing that lets this down is the, the screen resolution and that 4x3 aspect ratio. But other than that it kind of makes up for it with the fact you can plug in your own SD card there and play your own games or listen to music or whatever. And it saves you lugging around a, a big box of cartridges here and you can basically take all your games on the one device. It emulates games pretty well. There are some games that kind of slow down and have a few kind of buggy issues but otherwise for the price you're paying and the, the overall uh, kind of functionality and convenience I suppose it's, it's worth it in the end. So there you go that's the, the game box advance and that's the clone system I got from Deal Extreme. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you again soon.